A. That's the part that they got through. It was part B, the child care portion of it, where he referred to that as the human infrastructure part of the deal. Remember he said if he wouldn't sign it until both things had gotten through, until both sides had agreed on both portions of the of the infrastructure? Well, now he says, oh wait, no, that's not what I meant. That sounds like it last week when you were that used that word tandem. Anyway, I want to get an explanation from Elizabeth because there was a big statement to walk back. And I want to know what happened. I want to know what went on behind the scenes to make that move. Let's start with some of these stories coming out of the KFI 24-hour newsroom. The National Weather Service says triple-digit temperatures will cause potentially dangerous conditions in parts of Southern California. It's expected to be 110 in Lancaster, 104 in Santa Clarita today. The L.A. County Department of Public Health issued an excessive heat warning through tomorrow for the Santa Clarita and Antelope Valleys. It says that will increase the potential for heat-related illnesses, especially for people working outdoors. The Defense Department says the U.S. military conducted airstrikes against what it says were facilities used by Iran-backed militia groups near the border between Syria and Iraq. The Pentagon press secretary says the militias were using the facilities to launch unmanned aerial vehicle attacks against U.S. troops in Iraq. He says the U.S. military targeted three operational and weapon storage facilities Sunday, two in Syria, one in Iraq. He describes the airstrike as defensive, saying they were launched in response to an ongoing series of attacks by Iran-backed groups targeting U.S. interests in Iraq. Police in Azusa have shot and killed a man while responding to a domestic dispute call. L.A. County Sheriff's detectives who are helping in the investigation say the guy allegedly had a knife and wouldn't drop it. They say he walked in and out of his house several times yesterday before allegedly rushing at cops who used less lethal weapons to try and stop him. Detectives say when that didn't work, an officer shot him. A man's in the hospital in critical condition. After being shot in a drive-by in Carson, the cops say a Mercedes-Benz SUV stopped at an intersection last night and someone inside shot at a guy on the street. They say the SUV moved on about a block, then stopped and the front passenger got out and shot the man 20 more times. The SUV then took off. Well, the Free Britney movement has created momentum for conservatorship reforms. This is the biggest movement since I've been in advocacy for the last seven years. Carrie Kasem's an advocate for reform in part because it's a fight she's already endured in getting her father, Casey Kasem, out of an abusive conservatorship. Most people don't have enough money to retain a lawyer, let alone go through an entire trial fight that costs hundreds of thousands of dollars. Reform is a must. And Kasem says there are thousands of families fighting conservatorships. We have to stop letting it just be the rich and the famous that get this kind of attention. Kasem says her organization has been able to press for a reform in 12 states with eyes on the rest. In L.A., Chris Ancarlo, KFI News. When we come back, we'll talk with ABC's Elizabeth Schulze. Again, over the weekend, you had the president sort of walk back what sounded like an ultimatum last week. That is, support for the $1.2 trillion bipartisan infrastructure deal was dependent on his American family plan also reaching his desk through reconciliation. Not anymore? Because when you use that word tandem, that's what it sounded like on Friday. We'll find out what changed. Right now, let's see this crash on the 5. Hi, Robin. Good morning. Good morning. Let's go to Downey. On the 5, southbound just before the 605, it's a crash that was in the left lane. Move it over to the right shoulder pretty quickly. But you're still looking at a little bit of backup there at Lakewood Boulevard. In Long Beach, on 405 northbound just before the 710, Somebody had a blowout and they came to a stop in the middle traffic lane, so be aware of that. Could be changing a tire in lane. Long Beach on the 710 South Connector to the 91 Westbound, crash there on the shoulder of that transition. In Compton on the 91 Westbound after Central, four car smash up, move to the right shoulder. A little bit of damage to your drive from Wilmington. And City of Orange on the 22 Westbound just before Main Street. Hit and run there being worked on in the center divider area. KFI in the sky helps get you there faster. I'm Robin Banks. 506 on your wake up call, KFI AM 640 live everywhere on the iHeartRadio app. ABC's Elizabeth Schulze joins us. Elizabeth, good morning. Welcome back to Wake Up Call. Hey, good morning, Jen. Thanks for having me. Okay, so over the weekend, you had the president kind of walk back what really sounded like an ultimatum on Friday when he was talking about his $1.2 trillion bipartisan infrastructure deal. In fact, 
I kept repeating the word tandem, that he was saying if part B or part A was great, but unless part B of his infrastructure plan passed two, didn't sound like anything was going anywhere. All of a sudden last night I read, well, that's not what I meant. What happened? Yeah, it was a bit of a cleanup effort here from the White House. The president said he did not intend to say he would veto this $1.2 trillion bipartisan infrastructure deal. So that's the plan that's focused on more traditional infrastructure, roads, bridges, Internet. The president says he's not going to veto that if it doesn't come in tandem with this um, American Families Plan, which includes essentially would be trillions more on what they're being called human infrastructure. So that's child care, education, climate change. He, he didn't go as far as to say he doesn't want it to be passed along this route, but essentially the president was trying to win back some of the support from Republicans after he made those comments saying one has to be linked to the other. You know, unsurprisingly, when he said last week that they had to be passed in tandem, a lot of Republicans in the Senate said, hey, wait a second, this isn't what we agreed to. We agreed to this $1.2 trillion targeted plan. And we're not going to vote for this if it means we're going to also, you're going to go ahead and pass this much bigger plan without us. So trying to really keep that Republican support on board, really emphasizing that he wants this to be a bipartisan deal. But look, the president's walking a pretty fine line here because in addition to winning that Republican support, he's also trying to keep progressives in his own party on board who want those trillions of dollars more in spending passed at the same time. It's so interesting because I, I talked about this last week a little bit. I think one of the most fascinating things is going to be how the president walks this line between bipartisanship, the traditional bipartisanship, Republicans mm -hmm. versus Democrats, and then within his own party. How do you make Republicans happy? How do you concede certain things with them and yet make the progressives, the AOCs in your party, make them happy at the same time? Can you do that? It is such a challenge, and we're seeing this even play out, you know, every single day here. We already saw Senator Bernie Sanders, you know, really leading the charge for this massive American Families Plan. He wants this to be $6 trillion. In that same note, you know, we heard up yesterday Senator Joe Manchin say he thinks this should be closer to $1 to $2 trillion. I mean, that's a very big gap to bridge. And forget, you know, that doesn't even include trying to win over the Republican support. So, the president seems to know this. He really does seem to want a bipartisan deal, which is why I think he made this kind of massive effort to walk back his comments this weekend. But ultimately, if he doesn't have the progressives in the House on board, then it can't get passed there. And, you know, a little bit of this strategy from the White House seems to be trying to put the divisions on the leadership, the Democratic leadership in Congress. So in this statement over the weekend, the president said he expects that Congress will still move forward with this this plan, this two-track sort of strategy, even if he was, you know, distancing himself a little bit from it. And, you know, we have heard House Speaker Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer, the Senate Majority Leader, say they're planning to go forward with these two kind of bills at the same time. So they're then in a position where they're trying to bridge this gap. And it, just, it ultimately comes down to the fact that there's a slim majority. The, slim, the Democrat majority is so slim in both houses it's a very fine line for them to walk in. And if one side you know, gets, uh, doesn't get on board, the whole thing could, could seemingly uh, fall apart. All right. Thank you so much for explaining, Elizabeth. I appreciate it. Thanks so much. Appreciate Thanks. it. See you later. ABC's Elizabeth Schulze. I had to wonder over the weekend. So for the president to suddenly walk these comments back, knowing that he faces these two sort of fights, the traditional bipartisan fight, Republicans versus Democrats, and then the progressives within his own party. So I thought, maybe, because he, if you remember, campaigned hard on bipartisanship, that he was going to make sure that he could get bipartisan support for things that were going through during his presidency. Okay, well, last week, when it sounded like when he used that word tandem, that you had to have the traditional infrastructure along with the human infrastructure, both of those needed to be passed with bipartisan support for him to sign off on it. When it sounded like he was kind of throwing a, you know, muddy in the waters a little bit on bipartisanship. Then when he realized those comments were, you know, ticking the Republicans off, he said, hey, wait a minute, we didn't know we voted for this on a contingency. When that happened and he walked back those comments, was this a, did he tip his hat to 
hey, this is what I'm doing. I, I got to focus more on bipartisanship traditionally, and I can worry about the progressives in my party later. And here's why. I wondered this. It's easier, I would think, to get your party to sign off on at least the big things. They can accuse you of not going far enough, but they're going to be happy that you at least signed off on the foundation. Maybe they don't think you went far enough or high enough, but at least you got the things done that they needed done initially. You see what I mean? So maybe that's it. Maybe he's just trying to... If I can, if I can please everybody a little bit, I'm not pleasing anybody completely. Maybe. Maybe that was what his plan was, but we'll see. And I've got some um, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez news. <laughs> I will just say you will be entertained. That's coming up in a few minutes. <laughs> oh, you know how we get uh, sometimes gentlemen and uh, they compare size of stuff? Sort of she did that, but in the silliest way I've ever heard. <laughs> had to do with height. Height. All right. That's coming up a little later on Wake Up Call, because it's just too good. Let me get you back to some of the stories coming out of the KFI 24-hour newsroom. The Army Corps of Engineers is now helping out at the site of the collapsed building in South Florida, where nine people have been confirmed dead. 152 more are missing. We're going to go live to Florida in just a little bit with ABC's Lionel Moise for the latest. It's taken firefighters nearly an hour and a half to put out a two-alarm fire in a commercial building in Santa Ana. The Orange County Fire Authority says the fire started about 11.30 last night. It says 60 firefighters were called to the scene. Patients in Orange County who struggle with certain epileptic seizures may finally be able to get relief through a new procedure. The minimally invasive laser surgery is for patients who suffer from medically resistant epilepsy. For decades, relief for those patients could include having a chunk of brain removed, resulting in potential loss of vision, speech, or memory. But now, Hoag's Pickup Family Neurosciences is offering a clinical trial to look at the effectiveness of using an MRI-guided laser probe about the width of a guitar string to precisely target and destroy the scar or tumor that causes seizures. Hope says 11 of its 14 patients that have tried the procedure are now seizure-free. In Orange County, Corbin Carson, KFI News. California lawmakers are expected to vote today on proposed changes to the recall laws. State Democrats want to speed up the recall process by bypassing, bypassing a 30-day legislative review of election costs. They say it isn't necessary because they will approve $215 million for counties to run the election, Governor Newsom is expected to face a recall election this fall. Minnesota Attorney General Keith Ellison says he thinks the 20-plus year prison sentence for former Minneapolis cop Derek Chauvin is fair. The sentence is based on the facts and the law. It's based on the criminal history score uh, and uh, the severity. Ellison says the death of George Floyd was particularly cruel and it happened in front of kids. All right, when we come back, I want to get you the latest on the condominium collapse in Surfside, Florida. The death toll has risen to nine now. We've got 152 people still unaccounted for. We'll talk more about when does this become a recovery mission? Is it still a search and rescue mission? All of that straight ahead with ABC's Lionel Moise. But right now, let's take a look at some issues on the 405. Well, looking at Long Beach on the 405 northbound, just before you get to the 710, uh, somebody had a blowout here. They ended up in the middle traffic lane. Now, how did tow truck get them over to the right shoulder? They did have, to, did have to stop traffic to do that. So you will find a little bit of a, a pause for your drive on the 405 north just before the 710. Uh, south LA on the 110 south at Exposition, stalled car on the off ramp. So why use caution if you're going to exit here? Downey on the 5 south just for the 605. That's a two-car wreck. Move from lanes to the right shoulder. You're still going to have a little backup there right around Lakewood Boulevard. And four cars in Compton on the 91 westbound just after Central. Everybody over there on the right. Some slowing at Wilmington Avenue. KFI in the sky helps get you there faster. I'm Robin Beck. This report is sponsored by Audible. Make it a summer to remember with Audible. It delivers everything you love listening to all in one app. Stream the newest hot releases, bestsellers, Audible originals, popular podcasts, and more. Start listening free with a 30-day trial at audible.com. 
Sydney McLaughlin didn't just qualify for the Olympics, she became the first woman to break the 52 second mark in the 400 meter hurdles at the Olympic trials. Clayton Kershaw had his best outing of the season, striking out 13 over 8 innings of one run ball. The Dodgers won their four game set against the Cubs. And Mariners pitcher Hector Santiago is the first pitcher to be ejected for violating the MLB's foreign substance policy. He claims it was rotten. I'm the Steve Jordan. Every day, Caltrans workers risk their lives to make our roads safe. They are someone's loved one. Please use extra caution when you drive through a work zone. Always be work zone alert. You hear me say highs are supposed to reach 110 in Lancaster today, 104 in Santa Clarita. I know we are going to be drinking and using a whole lot more water at home today. But forget those plastic water bottles. You could be refreshing with filtered water coming out of any tap in your home if you just had a life source full house water system. And a life source system is going to get rid of the odor and the taste of chlorine from your water without using salt or chemicals. And you'll be bathing and showering without the drying effects of chlorine on your skin and hair. And anything we can do to stay hydrated during the heat of the summer is awesome. And with a life source water system, every faucet becomes a convenient place to have clean, delicious water. And speaking of convenient, the whole house systems are maintenance free. So you can say goodbye to all those filter changes in those monthly exchange tanks. And hey, if you have hard water, they have a solution. With life source water, you're buying directly from the factory, which is right here in Southern California. And all the products are made in the USA. And to celebrate the 4th of July, Life Source Water will pay your sales tax. You can take advantage of huge savings and experience filtered water for your entire home. But this offer ends soon, so act today. Call Life Source today for full service and full confidence in your water. Call them at 1-800-334-5009. That's 1-800-334-5009. Or just visit LifeSourceWater.com. Life Source Water. Taste and feel the difference. If you own a business and pay payroll taxes for five or more employees, there's a new government program that will rebate you up to $20,000 cash per employee. Problem is, how do you get a hold of that money? Does your accountant know about this? Probably not. This isn't what accountants do. But InnovationRefunds.com does do this. InnovationRefunds.com got me and my partner a six-figure refund. They know what they're doing. Their CPAs know exactly how to access these tax rebates. They do all the legwork, no upfront costs, and what they do is simply share a percentage of the cash they get back for you. InnovationRefunds.com has helped over 6,000 businesses, including mine, get some $450 million back. Remember, up to $20,000 per employee. Go to InnovationRefunds.com, click on the Qualify Me button, answer a few questions. InnovationRefunds.com. No risk, pretty high reward. InnovationRefunds.com. In the warehouse, the job has to get done. But if you're working with an outdated forklift that has more downtime than up due to maintenance, it's time to make the switch to Novalift lithium-ion powered forklifts. With a Novalift forklift, you get less downtime, a longer lifespan, fast, efficient opportunity charging, and a five-year cost of ownership that will save you almost $45,000 over internal combustion models. Novalift, revolutionizing the material handling industry one job at a time. What's in your warehouse? Find out more at NovaliftNA.com slash save. Boost our medicated ointment gets five-star reviews from our loyal users for fast relief of the pain and itch of almost any skin irritation. Boost our soothes insect bites and fungal infections. It really works on the summer rashes I get every year. I had psoriasis on my elbows. Blue Star worked wonders. Amazing stuff. Smear a bit on and the itch is gone. Look for the white box with the Blue Star in the first aid section. Feel Blue Star work fast. Or your money back. Thinking of buying a house and want a really low interest rate? Owning has a special for home purchases, where Owning pays all your closing costs, and the rate in APR is an unheard of 1.875% for a 15-year fixed mortgage with 20% down. This is the craziest low rate for a mortgage with no closing costs that Owning has ever done. 1.875% rate in APR. Heck, we're almost paying you to live in a new house. Call 8332-OWNING or go to owning.com to see if you qualify for this crazy low 1.875% rate. That's a fixed rate loan at 1.875% with no closing costs. 
Call 8332-OWNING now because 1.875 could go away at any time. NMLS 2611, licensed by the Department of Financial Protection and Innovation under the California Residential Mortgage Lending Act. Subject to credit approval. Offer as soon as the use of lender's choice as the title services. Call 833-858-8006 for terms and conditions. That's 8332-OWNING or owning.com. 8332-OWNING or owning.com. When it comes to keeping you and your business safe, Bay Alarm brings the best. Like offering virtual security consultations on your mobile phone. Because if your security is not the best, you're not secure. Now, more than ever, Bay Alarm. ACO 28CCL 880138. Hey, it's Gary and Shannon from the Gary and Shannon Show on KFI. We use music for everything we do in our lives, so we've made thousands of free playlists with music perfect for every mood and every activity on the free iHeart app. Playlists to ignite your backyard barbecue and playlists to light up your 4th of July fireworks show, along with everything in between for your long holiday weekend. Add that to being able to stream KFI anywhere you go or the Red, White, and Boom weekend and hundreds of thousands of podcasts all for free on the iHeart app. Number one for music, radio, and podcasts. Hey, it's Neil Savager here. Pasta water is liquid gold. Next time you cook pasta, don't drain it. Simply remove the pasta from the water and mix the pasta with the sauce. After the sauce and pasta cook on low heat for a few minutes, use a ladle to add some of that pasta water to your sauce. It'll make it extra yummy, extra silky, and extra flavorful. The Fork Report with Neil Savager. KFI AM 640. More stimulating talk. KFI AM 640 live everywhere on the iHeartRadio app. Welcome to a Monday. Hope you had a good weekend. I'm Jennifer Jones Lee. One more day of this excessive heat. The National Weather Service says triple digit temperatures will cause potentially dangerous conditions in parts of SoCal. It's expected to be 110 in Lancaster. 104 for a high in Santa Clarita today. The L.A. County Department of Public Health has issued an excessive heat warning through tomorrow for the Santa Clarita and Antelope Valleys. And we've got a brush fire near the five at the grapevine that's burned about 1,200 acres. It's just 2% contained. Cal Fire says a car fire that jumped onto a hill beside the freeway yesterday is likely the cause of the fire. It says vegetation in the area is extremely dry and apparently the fire is in rough terrain, which is hard to get into. 5.35, we'll talk with ABC's Jim Ryan. So Americans are returning to the operating room. You would think that that's good news, right? But the Red Cross is worried, Jim will explain. But right now, let's say good morning to ABC's Lionel Moise. Lionel, thank you for your time this morning. Please give us an update on the situation after that building collapsed in Florida last week. Yeah, there is an active search and rescue effort continuing. Uh, it is daylight here again, which is going to help them in this process. Uh, but it has been raining here. The rain has just stopped. Nine confirmed deaths so far. Eight of those victims have been identified. 152 people are still unaccounted for. And rescue crews and public officials here say uh, and have made it very clear this is not a recovery. This is an active search and rescue. They believe that they can still reach people and rescue them alive from this collapse. Now, they have uh, cut a trench 125 feet long, 20 feet wide, 40 feet deep, and they're using that to get below the rubble. Uh, Miami-Dade Mayor Danielle Levine Cava said yesterday that's actually how they were able to recover some of the additional bodies, and that is why the death toll went up. But they have found voids, and they are hoping that they will be able to find a void with people alive inside. Well, are they hearing, I know last week, uh, last time I talked to you, there were noises that rescuers were hearing, and of course that had to let them think possibly that there are still survivors in there. Are they still hearing that noise? Yeah, I'm not sure if they have heard it uh, recently, but they have said that they have been using sonar, and when they detect things, uh, they focus on that area. Also, canines have been very useful in this investigation. If canines uh, smell something or, 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 or focus in on an area, then the rescue crews will then focus their efforts in that same area as well. Uh, unfortunately, no one has been rescued alive 
uh, since they have been doing this effort. But again, they have said that there have been other cases of natural disasters and collapses where people have been rescued even a week later, uh, and they are just not going to give up. They're working in 12-hour shifts. There's about 80 people at any given moment uh, in different parts of this collapse site uh, working to see if they can uh, access anyone. I mean, for, for you and I who don't have loved ones in that rubble, it is wonderful to hear that this is still a rescue operation. But I have to admit, I understand the, the frustration of family members. If I thought my loved one was missing somewhere in that rubble, I would be, A, so concerned that we're five days into this search and rescue mission, and B, wonder why it was taking so long. But the, the fire chief made a great point. He said, we've got rubble up to three stories high to try and get through. Yeah, it's really difficult, and the families, uh, as anyone can imagine, uh, are very upset, and they were uh, critical of the rescue efforts. Uh, there is a big Jewish population here, uh, and the Israeli delegation is something that a lot of the family members wanted to come and assist in this search. Uh, and when the delegation got here, they asked them what they thought about the rescue efforts, and the mayor was comforted uh, and hope that the families were comforted that the delegation that came said that they uh, would have done exactly the same thing that the crews here on site were doing. They also bust the families closer to the collapse site yesterday so they could be closer to their loved ones, so they could pray, so they could hold vigils, because they have been kept away from this scene just like everyone else. But they also brought them closer so they could see with their own eyes exactly what was happening at the site, uh, exactly the work uh, and the care and the time that it took for these rescuers to get in. You have to remember that this is a dangerous situation. There is debris. There have been fires that have been started. Uh, there is rain that they're battling. And if they move too quickly, it could not only be dangerous for the first responders, but for the people they are trying to rescue. Uh, and that is part of why it is taking so long. And, Lana, um, I hate to ask you this grim question, and I know that you mentioned that survivors have been found in situations like this up to a week, but when does it go from a search and recovery mission to, or a search and rescue mission to a recovery mission? You know, I, I'm not exactly sure uh, when they will make that determination. They have not uh, given any indication about that as well. Some of the search and rescue crew uh, that has been interviewed, though, they said, look, we're not giving up hope and we're not stopping until they tell us we must stop. If we believe that we can find one person, we are going to keep looking. Um, and so, again, uh, we are at day five now, so, so time is of the essence. Uh, but they do believe that they that they can possibly rescue someone, and they're going to continue to do that. Okay, uh, I know that this the focus of this right now is, of course, rescuing anybody who is in that rubble. But I have to ask: Have they given any more inkling as to what it was that caused this collapse in the first place? This is a big question, and uh, people are demanding answers for a number of reasons. Now, the town of Surfside is publicly releasing uh, documents and correspondence related to the building, inspections, uh, meetings that have been had there. Uh, we've, we've learned several things from reports and the recertification process and maybe some parts of the building that need to be repaired, but they have not definitively said uh, what they feel has caused this building to go down. Now, it is important to mention Champlain Towers South is what collapsed, but there is a Champlain Towers North that was built the same year with the same materials by the same people. And so the people who live in that building, as you can imagine, uh, are concerned. And so the mayor and FEMA working together with local officials to evacuate the people out of that building uh, for safety concerns, of course, but also so they can comprehensively look into the safety of that building and the integrity of that building as well. So, you know, while we don't have answers now, uh, it, it is very uh, clear uh, and apparent that they are going to continue digging into this and investigating this until they have the answers because the mayor has said something very wrong happened here and he's going to get to the bottom of it. All right. Thank you so much, Lionel. I appreciate all that in-depth reporting. Thank you. Thanks. See you later. ABC's Lionel Louise. I just can't imagine. I don't know. I, okay, I, of course, I think I would be comforted um, if I was one of the family members and they bust me in closer to the rubble. But I, I think per, this reminds me of 9-11 in the, the rubble pile. And when I got there as a reporter, um, I've told you guys before that they put me on a bus because 
obviously we couldn't fly because nobody could fly at the time. They put the air restriction on. And so when I was working up in the Bay Area, I remember my news director was like, all right, you're going. So off I go on a Greyhound bus off to New York. And when I got there, that pile of rubble from the buildings was so great and so vast. And there were family members whose loved ones were in the rubble who had camped out around the rubble and were, it was, it was almost this scramble at times for some of the family members. They wanted to get in. They wanted to get their hands dirty and pick and move and, and push away the rebar and the concrete. And they just wanted to get in there. They needed to feel what was in that. They needed to, you know, somehow in, in their mind, they needed to be part of that rescue operation. It almost seemed like it was almost more harm than good in a way. They hated being just outside a barrier where they couldn't get in. And, and you and I both know that, that, obviously, unless you're a trained rescuer, it is not good for you to get in there. It is not smart. You could hurt yourself looking for your loved one. But the, it was so tormenting to them to be so close. That's the only thing that I think. Other than these families, um, you know, if, there's, if they've got uh, a lot of... If it's a large faith-based community, in this case a large Jewish community, maybe getting in there and praying together, maybe that was cathartic to them. But I hope it was, and I hope it didn't torment them at the same time to be that close to the rubble and not be able to do anything. All right, when we come back, we are going to talk with ABC's Jim Ryan about why the Red Cross would be worried that more and more Americans are going back to the operating room. Remember, all these elective surgeries were canceled during the pandemic. Why would it be bad that people are going back to get those surgeries done now? Jim will explain. Right now, Robin will explain what's up on the 5. Yeah, they still have some activity here with a crash in Downey. It's on the 5 southbound before the 605. Everybody's been taken over to the right shoulder and have been for some time, but you're going to slow down right around Lakewood Rosemead. And Long Beach on the 405 North at Pacific Place, this is where somebody had a blowout. They came to a stop in the right lane just before the 710. CHP is on scene right now. You will find some slowing as they did get that over to the right shoulder. It's going to change a tire. In Compton on the 91 westbound just after Central, four-car smash up on the right shoulder, but you're slowing down at Wilmington Avenue. Avenue. And I was looking at the map, and I think I saw a fire here on the 110 north at Manchester. Uh, maybe some uh, an encampment fire, but it is something found back at the 105. KFI in the sky helps get you there faster. I'm Robin Banks. Where do SoCal drivers go for a super selection of new Hondas and a super experience? The Norm Reeves Honda Superstore. Start with super value when you sell us your vehicle. Then choose from one of the largest Honda inventories in Southern California. Every new Honda is backed by our exclusive price protection guarantee. Which states, if you can find the same new Honda for less within five days, Norm Reeves will pay you the difference or buy your vehicle back. Plus, our friendly team makes car buying effortless and enjoyable. Hurry in for super selection and a super experience during the Norm Reeves 4th of July event. Visit our super award-winning Norm Reeves Honda Superstore locations in Huntington Beach, West Covina, the Irvine Auto Center, and the number one Honda store in the world in the Cerritos Auto Square. Plus, we're now open in Vista. Shop online at normreeves.com. As for Global Honda, can be in sales twice. weather from KFI. Hot. That's the word to describe today. One more day of this excessive heat. Sunny today has a range from the low 70s at the beaches to possibly 110 in spots like Lancaster. By tomorrow, though, we do have some of that monsoonal moisture again heading toward us. So highs should start to drop. We should be back in the low 90s for highs by tomorrow and probably stay that way for the next week. We lead local. Live from the KFI 24-hour newsroom, I'm Jennifer Jones-Lee. The S&P 500 averaged a return of 7% annually between 2006 and 2020. But if you missed the 16 best days over those 14 years, the return would have been zero. That's like taking a cake out of the oven before it's done. So call 833 plan EFE for your free retirement review from Edelman Financial Engines. Don't risk your future on a half-baked strategy like market timing. Instead, get a long-term strategy from an experienced professional financial advisor. 
Your advisor will double-check your current investments and discuss what you need to do now to help prepare for your future. Plus, you'll get a free personal financial plan that can adapt as your life evolves. That plan alone is worth $800. Getting it free is just icing on the cake. Call 833-PLANT-EFE by Tuesday, 10 p.m. Or visit EdelmanFinancialEngines.com. That's 833-PLANT-EFE. Or visit EdelmanFinancialEngines.com. Rates subject to change without notice. Minimum loan amount requirements apply. 60% loan to value and 620 FICO credit score. Certain restrictions apply. Subject to credit approval. NMLS 3290. Loans made or arranged pursuant to a California Finance Lenders Law License number 6036970. Equal housing lender. Wake up. I know you've heard all these great home loan rates being advertised. You probably heard them being advertised for weeks, months now. But maybe all along you've heard them and thought, oh, those, that would be awesome, but I bet I don't qualify. Well, I bet you haven't called Intel alone. Even if you've just got OK credit, even if you're self-employed, whatever your situation is, Intel alone can help you get a great home loan. In fact, right now, Intel alone is offering a 1.99% APR with no points and no lender fees. And this is even if your credit score is 620. But you've got to call Intel alone before the rates go up. Call them and ask them about a 1.99% APR with no points or no lender fees, and e this is even if your credit score is 620. So call Intel alone today. Call them at 1-800-918-6200. That's 1-800-918-6200. Or just go to IntelAlone.com. Intel alone. Borrow smart. Make it a summer to remember with Audible. It delivers everything you love listening to all in one app. Stream the newest hot releases, bestsellers, Audible Originals, popular podcasts, and more. Start listening free with a 30-day trial at audible.com. Call service champions for their $88 professional AC tune-up at 833-777-7777. Live and local. morning, a hot one. I'm Jennifer Jones-Lee and some of the stories we're watching in the KFI 24-hour newsroom. The Defense Department says the U.S. military conducted airstrikes against what it says were facilities used by Iran-backed militia groups near the border between Iraq and Syria. The Pentagon Press Secretary says militias were using the facilities to launch unmanned aerial vehicle attacks against U.S. troops in Iraq. And police in Azusa have shot and killed a man while responding to a domestic dispute call. L.A. County Sheriff's detectives who are helping investigate say the guy allegedly had a knife and wouldn't drop it. They say he walked in and out of his house several times yesterday before allegedly rushing at cops who used less lethal weapons to try and stop him. But detectives say that didn't work, and that's when an officer shot him. News is brought to you by American Vision Windows. Right now, let's say good morning to ABC's Jim Ryan. Jim, you would think that this is a good thing. Americans are returning to the operating room, but the Red Cross says not so fast. Yes, the whole world uh, kind of playing catch-up. That last story you were talking about there, the shooting. I mean, that, that person went to the hospital, probably needed a blood transfusion, even if he didn't make it. But uh, the the, the uh, rate of traumas is rising around the country. As more people get out, you find them getting into car accidents. There, there's been a lot of violence around, lots of issues. And every year at this time, you see an increase in demand on blood supplies. This year, it's even more critical because people who have been holed up for the last year and a half or so are now getting out and going places and finding themselves in accidents. So you see that increasing demand on the blood supply. And at the same time, you don't see as many donors coming in. And then, uh, naturally, during the pandemic, uh, most of the blood drives at offices, at high schools and colleges were canceled. You just couldn't hold them because there was nobody inside those buildings. What's the point? So now the Red Cross is trying to play catch-up and get as many people uh, rolling up their sleeves, not for a COVID shot, but to donate blood to help replenish the dwindling supply. Have they said that people are still um, just hesitant to go anywhere, sort of medical if they don't need to at this point, even if they're vaccinated? Well, right. I think there, there is some of that apprehension out there, but you know, the Red Cross and, and health officials are trying to ease people with concern about that, that it is safe, uh, that the blood supply is, is one of the best in the world in terms of being screened for those things. It doesn't take much to get knocked off the donor list. 
you know, if you take aspirin every day, uh, things like that. Uh, so you can imagine how careful they are with things about, uh, you know, coronavirus. Oh my gosh, I can't imagine. Are they saying too, if you are vaccinated or fully vaccinated, does it matter? Will they take anybody? They will, yes. Uh, yet again, there, it, there's a lot of paperwork going into it. Uh, if you're a, a regular donor, there's not so much paperwork, but if you're going in the first time, they will screen you fairly carefully for the things that you take and, and the vaccines you've had, things like that, uh, to ensure that nothing uh, unusual ends up in the blood supply. So, you know, uh, across the country and then even California's Lifestream Blood Bank says the need for donations in the Inland Empire is extreme, and you're finding that all across the country right now. Any specific type of blood that they're looking for, or just across the board they need it? Well, it is across the board, but the O group especially is the one that's most in need. I believe that's the most common, and so that's the one that gets used up for. My blood type's fairly rare, and so uh, when it's in short supply, it's really in short supply, but generally it isn't because not a lot of people are using it. So. You know, they're trying to, to juggle the supply and demand equation and just having a really difficult time in, wake of the, uh, in the wake of the pandemic. All right, Jim, thank you for the update on that. All right, see you, Jeff. See ya. ABC's Jim Ryan. Absolutely makes sense. I mean, if you are a regular blood donor, you... Well, I shouldn't say you probably didn't. You may not have donated blood last year because of the pandemic. Maybe the place that you normally go. Maybe there's normally a blood drive, you know, once every month or two at your place of work. And normally that's where you went. Those were probably canceled last year. And so I'm sure that they definitely need it. If you are able to donate blood, gosh, I mean, this is, this is the time to do it. Or if you haven't for the last year or so and you want to get back into it, uh, yeah, clearly this is a, a very necessary time. All right, let's get back to some of these stories coming out of the KFI 24-hour newsroom. LA County Public Health Director Barbara Ferrer says, while deaths from COVID-19 have dropped dramatically in the county, the deaths that are happening are nearly 100% among unvaccinated people. Ferrer says, while masking and social distancing are effective ways to keep cases down, the best way for people to protect themselves from getting the virus is to get vaccinated. She says 58% of residents 16 and over in L.A. County are now fully vaccinated. St. Joseph Center outreach teams are due to start offering a permanent housing to people living in homeless camps in Venice. L.A. Councilman Mike Bonin says homeless people living in tents along Oceanfront Walk will be offered housing, shelter, and services starting today. He says those who don't accept housing will have to leave the area by a certain date. Authorities in New Mexico say the five people killed in a hot air balloon accident had strong connections to the community. Four passengers and the pilot died in an accident over the weekend. Stacey Francis says her parents were in the balloon at the time. Next week they'd be celebrating their 21st anniversary and they were just, they were just loving people. They loved each other, they loved everyone they met. The balloon hit a power line Saturday and the basket crashed onto a street in Albuquerque. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken has met with Pope Francis at the Vatican. ABC's Megan Williams says it comes after U.S. Roman Catholic bishops voted to draft a statement on communion that may admonish Catholic politicians who support abortion rights. The visit is seen by experts as renewing positive relations as the Pope Francis declined to receive former Secretary of State Mike Pompeo. Pompeo had accused the Vatican of endangering its moral authority by cooperating with China over selecting bishops in that country. Ah, uh, Simone Biles. Not that there was ever any doubt, but Simone Biles is on her way to the Olympics in Tokyo after winning the U.S. Women's Gymnastic Trials last night in St. Louis. She won four gold medals and a bronze at the 2016 Games in Rio de Janeiro. Joining Biles on the U.S. team in Tokyo will be Sunitha Lee, Jordan Childs, and Grace McCollum. Now, there was some controversy over a woman named Gwen Berry. Gwen Berry is a hammer thrower on the Olympic team, and she says she was set up after the national anthem started playing during her medal ceremony during her field trials on Saturday. At the time, she turned her back to the flag before eventually covering her face with a shirt. Now, the 31-year-old had earned her spot on the Olympic team for a second time with a bronze